friends. Today we're going to talk about foam rolling and I'm going to show you some of the most basic foam rolling techniques. First of all, do you foam roll? And if you don't, you need to give me a really good reason because I'm going to give you a lot of good reasons why you should. First of all, foam rolling is great for warming up or cooling down. You can use it before your workout or after your workout. Before your workout, it will loosen up and warm up your muscles so that when you start to do your activity, you're already stretched out. Sometimes I go from my foam roll right to my workout. And for cooling down, you can use it to prevent soreness buildup. So it's really like getting a deep tissue massage if you've never done it before. And some people get a little confused on how long you do it for, how do you hit the muscles. So let's review that really quickly. There's different types of foam rollers on the market. Now I'm with my client of a very, very long time, Anita, who has very sensitive muscles. So we tried the basic foam roller on her and it was just like, ouch, ouch, ouch. It was just too intense. Mm -hmm. So we got her what's called the melt foam roller. It's nice and squishy, much softer for people who are very sensitive. So we're going to give her that one. Then there's the good old standard pressurized foam. It looks like a styrofoam cup. It's just pressurized styrofoam. And this is the most generic one. You'll see this one at all kinds of stores. Then if you really like deep tissue massage and you want something that's going to feel like fingers going into your muscles and needs you, we can use something called the meat grinder, <laughs> just kidding, the rumble roller, and it has these little nubs that stick into your muscles and it really feels like a person giving you a deep tissue massage with their fingers. And then there's even harder ones. You want to check before you buy one how stiff the foam is on the outside. So for example, on this one, the foam is a little squishier and on this one, the foam is a little bit harder and it's always over a PVC pipe. So it's added, it has added stiffness. So pick your poison and let's review some of the basic rolls. First one we're going to do is everyone's favorite for the glutes. You take one leg, cross it over like you're sitting on a chair and you lean towards that leg. So the leg that's up in the air. And we just rock forward and back over the glute. You want to do at least 10 rolls per area. So we'll watch Anita. So she's rolling onto her right glute and then she'll switch legs and go to the other side. And she'll lean over to the left and she'll get right into the center of that glute muscle. Next, we'll do the hamstrings. So we're gonna put it under our legs. Let's turn a little sideways. Hands go behind us to prop us up. We're gonna try to get the legs off the floor and we rock forward and back. To make this a little bit harder, you take one leg over the other. And what this does is the weight of Anita's top leg is pushing down on the bottom leg. And then I'll demonstrate that over here too. I'm pushing down on that top leg to increase the pressure. It's like someone's pushing you down into the roller and then you change sides. Now the, the hamstring muscle is a pretty long muscle. It runs the entire length of the upper thigh. So we want to hit three spots. We want to hit the upper hamstring, like Anita's doing now, then the middle hamstring, and then we want to get just above the knee, but not inside the joint or not right under the joint. We always want to avoid joints. We want to avoid the curve of the neck, and we want to avoid the arch of the lumbar spine. Other than that, all areas are pretty good to go. Next, let's go to our calves. It's the same principle. We lift our bodies up, and we rock forward and back. And then to hit other areas of the calf, we turn our toes out and we can also turn our toes in. And you're going to feel, you feel the different areas of oh, your calf? I do, yes. And so we want to get close to the ankle, but again, not right on the joint. Then we want to get the middle of the calf and the upper calf because you're going to have various degrees of soreness depending on what part of the muscle you tend to use the most. Next, we're going to go to the quadriceps. Now the next two ones I'm going to show you are the ones where people say, ow, the first time. We want to hit, again, like we did with the hamstring, the upper quadricep, the middle quadricep, and the lower quadricep, but stay away from the actual knee. So to get into position, you're going to move your knee outside the foam roller, and you're going to put your thigh right on. So it looks like this. My knee goes down like a figure four. Come down onto your elbows, and we're going to use our arms to pull us forward and push us back. I'm doing my upper quadricep right now. Let's see where Anita is. She's on the upper quad. Then we want to get a little more to the middle of the quadricep. So she's going to pull herself a little more forward, trying to keep the leg off the floor. 
If it hurts too much, you can drop the foot down and drag the toe on the carpet, and then she'll finish up closer to the knee. Perfect. And you do that on both sides. And how many rolls do you want to do? A minimum of 10 rolls in each section. And if you feel a little knot, you can just stop and hang out on the knot. Okay, ready for more pain? I mean, ready for more stretching? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna do the IT band, where a lot of people get tight if you're a walker, hiker, runner. We're gonna lie on our side. We're gonna put the foam roller underneath where the femur bone inserts to the hip, the acetabulum joint, for those of you who are studying anatomy. Mm -hmm. So we wanna be just underneath that bone. Uh, you're gonna feel a little knob there, get right underneath that knob, and you can put your hands down on the floor, see if you can pick that leg up, and we're gonna roll a few inches up and down to get the upper part of the IT band. And then we're gonna move it down a little bit to the middle part of the IT band, and now it really starts to hurt. The closer you get to, towards your knee, the more you feel. Do you feel that, Anita? It's very sensitive. Yeah, it gets, it gets more and more painful. Even I feel it. I already did it this morning <laughs> before yoga. <laughs> and then we move it down towards the knee. So again, about 10 rolls in each spot. Try and keep the leg off the floor if you can. It's fine if you have to drop it down and drag it for a little less pressure. All right. Now, the upper back. Let's do one that feels nice. <laughs> so we're going to put the foam roller behind our upper backs. We're going to lay back, hands behind the head. And it's just like you're about to do a sit up, you're gonna lay back, lift your hips up off the floor, and we're gonna roll so that the roller is going to the bottom tips of the shoulder blades and then to the top tips of the shoulder blades. We wanna avoid the curve of the neck and we wanna avoid the curve of the lumbar spine. So everything else in between is fair game. And this is fantastic if you spend all day hunched over a desk or you do artwork or something where you're forward, it's gonna help open up those muscles. We get something called this upper cross syndrome in this day and age. It's just that forward rounded shoulder posture. And this one feels fantastic. You can roll a little bit to one side and we'll get a little more under that lat. And then she can rock a little bit to the other side and we'll get a little more under the other lat. And again, at least 10 rolls, but you're gonna love this one so much, you're not gonna wanna stop. I don't wanna stop. <laughs> and then the final, we're gonna do something a little yogi-y. This is the cat-cow. So we're gonna be on all fours. We're gonna put our forearms on the foam roller. Our butt's gonna go back as our arms reach out, flat spine, and then we round the back as we pull the foam roller towards us, the arms stay straight. So this is just your good old cat-cow stretch that you might do in yoga but we do it with the foam roller and it helps stretch those lats. Now to make it deeper, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna take one arm away. So we're just gonna let this arm rest on the floor and we're gonna saw one arm and we're stretching right here the lats. You feel that here? I do. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of other areas of the body you can foam roll to, but these are the big major muscles. Well, I hope you like that tutorial on foam rolling and I hope you add it to your fitness routine. You're really gonna love how you feel after you do it. Please remember to like and subscribe to our channel for lots more tips for women in their 40s, 50s, and beyond. And we'll see you next time. Bye.